This picture isn't moving. It's perfectly still. It's not a GIF, GIF, or video clip. It's actually a still image. Don't believe me? Focus on the very center of the image. If you focus hard enough, the image will slow down and maybe even stop. So what's happening here? Before we can answer that question, you have to understand a little bit more about how your brain and your eyes work together. Light from the outside world travels through your cornea, the protective outside layer of your eyes. Light then travels through your pupil, which is that little black circle in your eye. Your pupils adjust in size as the outside world gets darker or brighter to take in more or less light. The iris is what changes the size of your pupil. It's what people are talking about when they say you have brown or green or blue eyes. Light is then passed through the lens, which focuses the light onto your retina. Fun fact, when light passes through the lens, it actually inverts the image, meaning your retina actually has a completely upside down image of real life. However, this gets fixed when the optic nerve takes this light information from the retina and gets it to your brain, where your brain automatically reflips the image the right way up. Basically, you're actually seeing the world completely upside down, but your brain automatically fixes it for you. Now let's back up to the retina. The retina contains two types of photoreceptor cells. The first are called rods, which are responsible for your peripheral vision and being able to see in low light. And the second kind are cones, which are responsible for helping you see colors. But why should you care? Researchers Young and Helmholtz came up with the creatively named theory that suggests how this all works. The Young-Helmholtz theory, or the trichromatic theory, suggests we have three types of cones called short, medium, and long, or sometimes referred to as blue, green, and red. Mixing combinations of these colors, they suggest, is what allows us to see all different types of colors. And we know this color mixing is happening in our eyes and in our brains due to certain optical illusions such as this one. These dots are all the same color. Don't believe me? Let's remove the lines. This isn't some editing trick either. The same effect happens here. The gray boxes in the left column and the gray boxes in the right column are the exact same color. Your brain is just really confused and actually changes what color you're perceiving based on the other colors that are around a specific object. Here's one last demonstration. Watch this circle as it moves back and forth. It stays the same color, right? Now let's throw on a background. I promise you, the circle isn't changing colors. It's just the background tricking your brain into thinking that it is. So we know there's some color mixing going on in our visual perception, but there's another visual perception theory theory known as the opponent process theory. It suggests opposing color pairings, such that when one pair of colors is active, its opposite pair is suppressed. Evidence for this is in after images. Now these take about 30 seconds to actually see, so if you don't care about this illusion, you can skip to this timestamp on screen or just skip ahead a bit, but if you want to see this illusion, bear with me. Look at this picture and stare at the person's nose. You want to keep your focus on their nose for about 30 seconds. I promise, the illusion afterward is pretty cool. Keep going, you're almost there. Keep your focus just a little longer, almost there. Three, two, one. If you did it right, for a split second there, you should have seen that image in full color, but all I was showing you was a completely white screen. All of this together helps partially explain the very first image we saw. According to the trichromatic theory, we're able to see the purple as a result of being able to see both red and blue combined. And according to the opponent process theory, yellow and blue are opposites. So when our eyes are taking in yellow, our ability to process blue is suppressed. But simply, this color combination puts your brain on system overload. But that's not all, because you can put purple and yellow next to each other and your brain has no problem processing them. In fact, any artist can tell you that yellow and purple are actually complementary colors. There's also something about the way this illusion is drawn to make it seem like it's moving. And that something involves monocular cues. Monocular cues allow us to perceive depth without needing to use both of our eyes. Depth perception with both of our eyes is a bit obvious because both of our eyes give us a slightly different angle on how we view the world. This difference is called retinal disparity and when these two differing images converge together, that's what allows us to see depth perception with both of our eyes, but what do we use to perceive depth using only one eye? I mean, you can close an eye and still see the world in 3D. There's a bunch of monocular cues. First, we have relative size, where larger objects appear closer and smaller objects appear further away. Interposition is the idea that we perceive objects that block our view from other things as closer to us. Texture gradient makes it seem like more detailed objects are closer while less detailed objects are further away. Relative motion or motion parallax makes us think that objects that are moving faster are closer to us than the objects that are moving slower. Not 
Not to mention, lights and shadows also play a crucial role in your ability to determine where objects are in a 3D space. And all these cues each play a crucial role in coming together to make this completely still image look like it's moving. You could clearly see how relative size, interposition, and lighting and shadows are used to create depth. While monocular cues make this picture appear to have depth, why does it stop moving when you focus on the center? The idea here is that the picture only moves so long as it's not the center of your attention. In other words, our peripheral vision. Peripheral vision is handled by the rods, and combining it with color gives us grouping principles, called gestalt principles. Like monocular cues, there's many gestalt principles, but the main ones include the following. Similarity, where we group similar objects together. Proximity, where we group objects that are physically close to each other. Continuity, where we group objects that follow an uninterrupted pattern. Closure, where your brain automatically fills in the gaps. And the law of prognance, or good figure, where your brain simplifies complex images into one singular object. This image combines these principles together and it messes up your brain. It wants to group the squiggle lines based on how they are drawn, but simultaneously wants to group the lines based on their color. However, as you stare into the middle of the image, your brain tries to simplify the picture into one object as much as it can. So your brain actually tricks itself into thinking the purple lines lead to other purple lines and the yellow lines lead to other yellow lines. If you're gonna remember anything from this video, it should be that your brain tries its best to make sense of the world around you, especially with the amount of information it's receiving at all times. The retina contains rods and cones, each with their own jobs. Monocular cues allow us to perceive depth with only one eye, and gestalt principles really force you to mentally group objects together whether you want to or not. If you learned anything today, you should subscribe and leave a comment to let me know what topic you want to see covered next.